This is our 2004 Nissan 350Z. We've crammed over $100,000 worth of parts into this car, including a brand spanking new LS crate engine. On paper, this is the best car we've ever built, but it's got a problem. It's running poorly at the moment, it's overheating, bogging down, doing a bunch of weird stuff. I'm having a hard time sleeping. We put too much money, too much time into this thing to let it be that way, so we gotta figure out what's wrong. Today, we're gonna investigate what's really going on with this car. We're gonna diagnose our problems, hopefully fix them once and for all, and then we're gonna head back to the track to do our first ever tandem drifter. Will we finally make the $100,000 we've spent on this stupid Nissan 350Z worth it, or will we just make it worse than ever? All right, so here's what we know. Low down in the RPM range where you expect a bunch of torque out of an LS engine. This thing is just really sluggish and slow to react and just doesn't make much power until it's really high in the RPM range. It also is overheating pretty badly when we're romping on it. Those two issues could be related, uh, not sure yet. But the other thing it's doing is bogging down seemingly out of nowhere while you're driving. And when a car bogs down hard enough that it basically shuts off, you kind of lose control of the car, and that's not what you want, obviously. Our handbrake was super sluggish, and the fluid seemed to be leaking out around the back of the transmission. So the question is, what's causing these things? What's wrong? You and me, and me and you, we're gonna figure this thing out together. So the first thing I'm gonna look at is the cooling system. We'll try to address the overheating issue. We're gonna re-bleed the cooling system really thoroughly and make sure that it has no air in it and that it's doing its job as well as it can. So that if we have any overheating issues moving forward, we know that it's because of an issue with the engine, not with the cooling system. We'll do that, refill it up, we'll go under the car, and we're gonna start looking at the crank position sensor circuit. When we took this to the dyno for the first time, our dyno tuner software couldn't recognize the crank position sensor, even though it was there and was brand new and the correct one. And even with swapping a new one in, we still were having crank position sensor issues, which is ridiculous. So that leads me to believe that there might be something wrong in the wiring to the crank position sensor or in the ECU. So we'll have to check those things. But crank position sensor issues will cause a car to run poorly, especially at low RPMs, and overheat. So I do think there's something to that, I just don't know exactly what. Gotta tear into it to find out. Okay, starter's loose, so now I can get access to the crank position sensor. A little tricky spot, but now we've got that disconnected, so you can see our little three-prong harness connector guy up here. So I'm just gonna probe from each of these pins back to the ECU to where they go and make sure that there's nothing uh, weird going on. There. Okay, as you can tell from the beeping, uh, we do have continuity from the crankshaft position sensor to the ECU, uh, so that's good, and only about a third of an ohm of resistance. Nothing real weird going on there. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> a little starter gunk in my eyes. What did that taste like? Uh, aluminum. <laughs> Everything checked out just fine, so that leads me to believe that the real issue doesn't lie with any of our hardware, but it's more a software-related thing. Maybe the ECU, the sensor is new. Literally everything is brand new, and it all checks out, so it's got to be with the software. There's just no other way about it. We just launched pre-orders for an all-new stocky, the S2000. We upgraded the body construction, improved the paint quality, and designed it to roll smoother and longer. We can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. Thanks in part to today's sponsor, Shopify, our go-to commerce platform to run the donut website. They're literally the reason why you can pre-order a stocky and buy donut stuff. Shopify makes it easy to start, grow, and manage a business. And if you're new to the game, they've got helpful tools like business name generator and Shopify Learn to help you get started. With user-friendly templates and easy to use customizations, you can transform your idea into a fully operational store within minutes. So join Donut and sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash donutmedia or just click that link below. That's 2000. So while Zach's checking out the electrical stuff, I'm gonna actually have to go through and check out other stuff on the car. The rear axle, that got busted, the boot tore on it, flinging grease everywhere. And we're gonna check on the e-brake because with these four piston calipers, this thing should have locked no problem. And Zach had to use both hands just to lock it up. So there's gotta be a block in there somewhere. Something's up, but we gotta get to the bottom of it, which we are not looking forward to. It is a massive job, a lot of hammering to put these in. Ah. But in the end, it'll be worth it. Throttle response will be there, and the suspension will be much better for it. Oh, gross. 
Now I'm gonna try to suss out a little leak we had happening out of the back of the transmission. Fluid seemed to be leaking out around the output shaft seal, so I'm gonna take the drive shaft out and just see if we can get that to quit leaking. Uh, I don't know, it looks fine. <laughs> All right, put it back in. <laughs> I mean, visibly it looks okay, but you can definitely tell that that is where the fluid was coming out from. Uh, it's wet all around there and in kind of the fling zone from there. So I'd have to imagine that we damaged this seal during install at some point, uh, you know, putting the drive shaft in, maybe nicked the seal. I'm sure it's our fault one way or another. So I'm gonna yank it out of there, get a new one and install it and hope that fixes the leak. Slap her on. No lube or nothing, dude. I knew you were different. <laughs> so we're gonna get rid of the Willwood four piston brakes that we were using for the handbrake and opt for a more OEM style two piston from Part Shop Max. This just has two big pistons in there and that should let our handbrake work a little bit easier. This is not a knock in any way on these Willwood brakes. They are fantastic brakes, but they're meant for more traditional braking and we wanna be able to just lock up the rears. So we think these calipers are gonna let us do that a little easier. Okay, so that's gonna go there. And then this one uh, go down in there. Oh, I mean, oh. Uh. Okay, we got all of the rear brake components installed, so now it's time to do the most fun part of any brake job, bleed the brakes. I'm in the car, I'll be working the foot pedal and the handbrake, and Adam's gonna be at the calipers cracking the bleeders open so that we have no air in the lines. Pump her up. Holding. Pump. Holding. Pump. Holding. One hour later. We got all the brakes installed, they're bled, so now it's time to see if they work. They look good. <laughs> well, looks like we need a little juice. Now let's see if they work. Okay, and with that, we've done all we can do here at the Inglewood Propulsion Laboratory, so now it's time to get this car back to a dyno so we can make sure this thing's running right. Then it's time to slide. I can't wait to tandem with Low Car. Oh, I can't wait. Well, it turns out I'll be waiting a lot longer than expected. Our ECU, I think, got corrupt. So we're back from the dyno. Things didn't go our way. The ECU just was not working out. The tune was just not being taken. So we've got to go from a factory style ECU to a full standalone. It's the only thing we could think of to fix this thing. And with that, we've got to change out the harness. But I don't want to just throw this thing away. It was $2,000. Luckily, the guys at Link ECU said they'd hook us up and help us with this issue. They'll be able to take this wiring harness and repin it for us. That way, it plugs into their ECU specifically, right? You can't use a PlayStation controller on an Xbox. So I can hear it already. Why did we not use an aftermarket ECU from the beginning? And that's gonna get really nerdy. The charts are more precise on standalones. You could get really into the detail of your airflow ratios, but there's two big catches to standalone ECUs. One, full standalone means no more street car. You are not gonna make that thing street legal. That thing is a full race car. And two, they're pricey. They cost $2,500 or more, which is more than I wanted to spend even on hi -Z. But I think it's worth it because this is the last thing it needs, right? We've got our wiring harness back from Link, which should give us full communication and full control over all the sensors, all the parameters, all the things. All right, let's toss some spaghetti. Somebody touch my spaghetti!
All right, we just got the car back from the dyno, and all I want today is to get these two cars to tandem a little bit for what will be my first time tandeming. You think we can do it? Let's do this. So let's make it happen. Let's shred. Job's trying to get his bearings with high car, not an easy car to drift. Adam is kind of uh, harassing him a little bit. Zach is good at drifting for his experience level, but he's never tandem before. So imagine just all the difficulties of drifting, but then with someone right next to you. And if they touch, stuff breaks, and we don't really have any spares. And I'm just waiting for something bad to happen. You know, that seemed much better. Yeah, it's first gear definitely. It's at 235 right now, so back to the pit. Okay, so after a quick test rip on the skid pad, um, I don't want to say I'm disappointed, but I'm not quite appointed either. You know, we really had our fingers crossed, hoping that it would come out here and just be flawless. But in true high car tradition, it is not. Uh, it's overheating and feels a little down on power. Don't add up. It just don't add up. I don't know what that's gonna mean for our tandem photo today, which is really what we're out here to get. It's all I want. So we're gonna, we're gonna put some more effort into it, try to get the coolant bled, try to get it acting a little bit better, and then take a crack at it. It's time to do it. Throw my helmet on, and we're gonna go out there and hit it as many times as it takes, but we're gonna get it. I will tandem today. I will. Tandeming is very difficult. You really have to have trust in each other, trust in both your cars and your abilities, especially if you're that follow driver. It takes a lot of control to stay in that pocket and not crash into the guy in front of you. Yeah, it's much better to have the more experienced driver in the back. And that's why we have Adam in the follow car. You know, he's got a lot of experience on the professional drifting circuit. He drives in Formula Drift. So Zach will just be able to focus on linking the turns. On just getting the car around the course. And yeah. Adam can uh, focus on getting as close to Zach as possible. Yeah. First attempt, Adam overcooked it. Overcooked it a little bit. Uh, also, I don't know. I don't know what happened, yeah. but they didn't do it. Okay, round two, here we go. Big gap, big gap. Come on, Adam. Oh. You know, I just think there's some speed discrepancies between the two cars, not just with mods on the high car, but literally the gearing in the high car is a lot different than what we got going in low car. Joe's been having to do this all in like first gear while Adam's in second gear. So we're like, we're like walking together, walking together, yeah. walking together. And I start running. Yeah. It's going to take you half a second to yeah, like so. figure out what we're doing. All right. So that, that, <laughs> that first entry, uh -huh. that's pretty good, but it's the transition that's kind of wonky. I'll do my best. <laughs> we'll see how I'll do whatever I can do. Oh, yeah. I want yeah. low car. Oh, I want really tucked tucked in. I want him breaking doors. <laughs> so tucked in, he's gonna want a blanket and a glass of warm milk. Look, but, 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 read him a little bedtime story. <laughs> wow, that's fun. Oh my god, if only this thing would just stay off the overheating train, we'd be okay. That last run convinced me that this is a really good car underneath its problems.
Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. We upload new videos multiple times a week. I love you. Woo.